like to do tonight since we wasn't here last week and maybe let what we did learn kind of absorb. We've had about two weeks to kind of let that absorb. Uh, and hopefully you guys studied. We kind of like to recap on, on, on this pre-tribulation theory and then uh, go on and get into the mid part of it. And if, if we have time, we'll, uh, we'll finish. If we don't, we'll be back next week. So, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> the pre-tribulation theory is, this is the most commonly taught theory today in churches in America. And I would say around the world in a, in, in a Christian, Christian setting. Uh, does everybody agree with that? Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, in here we call it the rapture. And I know we, we discussed that word. Uh, it's not in the Bible. It's no big deal. Uh, and all it is is a, to be raptured away is to be called out. The snatching away this and that and other, and I think that we all understand that. Uh, in this pre-tribulation theory, is the belief that the church will be raptured before the tribulation period begins. And uh, what tribulation time is he talking about? Last seven years. Last seven years. Before the tribulation stop. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's from what we've learned from Daniel, it is the the seventieth week, the last week uh, of this that seventy week prophecy in the book of Daniel that, that we that we uh, that we went over. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on this pre-tribulation theory or comments? Or comments, yeah. Because I think the last time we was in here, some people may have been walking out going. I don't know about that. Well, That's why I've always believed. Me, I think it's the practical thing here is one of really what 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 John talked about what God talked about in the seven churches. It's going to deceive the whole world. I think it's about the seven churches. It's all about being deceived. And it's come on man and man been talking. And I and I and I agree with you, Billy, on that because it's you had it up here last week. Maybe no, you got it too. That I haven't changed anything. And which one? Go, go back to the Margaret lady, the okay. Margaret McDonald. And that's what it is. Is uh, I'm on the ones that was in here last time. We went over this, and this basically this Margaret McDonald lady uh, in Scotland. She had a vision, so to speak, that uh, that Christ was going to leave His throne and come and rapture His church out before this time of tribulation. And this uh, this uh, John Darby fellow, he called on to that and, and he, he hands it over to Schofield, which he was an author and a book salesman, this and that and other. Of course, it promoted his sales. And that's really when this, you know, when did it take off, this theory? Uh, well, in the 1800s. In the 1800s. I think so Schofield Bible got a hold of it around 1850, I think. Right. Can I say that? But I do think, man, even us today, we're living the end times in America with the last generation. I think man all the time look for an easy way out. He would not have to go through tribulation. And I think this here was a, a good thing for people. A lot of people have been gone since that's been put out. They will not have to go through tribulation. But we're in the big tree. We are going through the tribulation. We're going to see this happen. Regardless of what anybody thinks, you're going to see this. Now, now, just to clarify, you say that you think this was a good thing for the, and you're right, some well, of them. It, it was not a good thing, period, because it was well, wrong, it false teaching. Well, well, but it took a lot of ease, a lot of people's mind, and they got them. You see what I'm You're talking about the ones that had passed on already. Ones that passed right. on. Sam? Well, I've got a question for you then. Uh, and. I guess I'm going to jump forward a little bit because I know what your belief is. Right. You believe that it's he's, he's going to come after the tribulation, which is a time that you can pinpoint yes, I can. to the date down. No, I can't pinpoint the date down, but I can show you right when the Bible tells you exactly when he's going to come. Right. We, 
And the Bible tells us there's a certain period of time. But the Bible also tells us that we are not going to know the day nor the time. Not even the angels will know the day or time. So, you know, you can't you can't say that you you know when he's coming. You can't do that. Uh, period. Uh, and you can't say that you can't say the day or the hour. You, you, you can't close. say the time. I say what my mind is. You're getting pretty close to the year or so. I look at Nobody it. knows for sure. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, generation seventy years or not. I look at it. Hmm? Generation seventy years. Hey, Sam, this is what my Bible tells me. Over in Mark thirteen, it tells you plain. Behold, I have told you all things beforehand. Mm -hmm. Everything you need to know is in your Bible. If you believe That's exactly Christ, right. I believe God has wrote you a letter. This is a letter to every one of us. All we got to do is pick it up and read it. It's our letter. It's to us. And if people have never picked it up and read it, they're going to be lost. A lot of people have got confused with when God said He was going to gather His elite Christians from the four corners of the earth. He was speaking about taking them over before the devil. And I think they've got that confused and gathering them up. No, I don't think that's got nothing to do with that thing for the seven people. I'm going to tell you what my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me plain. This is what's going to happen. Revelation chapter 11 tells you plain. You're going to see two witnesses. It tells you. They're going to be the one that stopped the rain for three and a half years, which is Elijah, the one that turned the water into blood, which was Moses. They're going to be there. 1,260 days. Well, all I'm saying is, as we go through this, uh, I mean, you can make a hard, fast statement for yourself uh, as far as what you believe the Bible's telling you. And, and yeah, and I can read it too, and I can point out scripture for scripture opposite, uh, you know, because here in Matthew chapter 24 and so forth, you know, we know that here, here's my point. We know that Jesus is going to come. We're going to be raptured one, one, some, at some point in time. We don't know which time. But there's a reason that, that uh, he, Jesus put that in the Bible because where he's going to come at the twinkle of an eye. At the hour of the thief, all right, and he tells us the man's house that was broken into. If he didn't know when the thief was coming, he could have been there to stop him. But what Jesus is telling us is, be ready, church. All right, be ready. If we got to go through a rapture, if we got to go through a time of tribulation, so be it. It doesn't matter. A hill of beans, we're gonna go through it if it's set in our path. But the main thing of this, I think we just need to make sure that we're ready. There you go. We're ready to go when He comes. If it's pre-tribulation, pre mid-trib, post-trib, whatever trib, we just need to be ready and we need to carry that with us day in and day out. Like, like the young virgins with the oil. We need to be ready for Him to come. I'm ready for Him to come right now. And that goes back to what Mike Exactly. Always, that goes back to what Mike's always saying that you live it daily. Exactly. Know? That's one and that's my point. And I agree with you, Sam. It, it doesn't matter when. If it, it, it doesn't if if you're a child of God and your name is written in the land's book of life, it all this does not matter when this takes right. place. It doesn't matter when. Because it if if we have to go through it, we have to go through it. That's and, right. and if you have to go through it, just remember if you're a Christian, you're sealed by God anyway. So we That's right. That chose you in the first one, just we just need to make sure we're ready, and we need to make sure that we present this gospel to as many people as we can, so they have the opportunity and live a life that presents it to them also. And you know, here's the, it, the thing is here: everyone up in here know that we're. We're not going to agree 100 percent of the time, and that's fine. But the one thing that we can we're agree still on, brothers in Christ, you know. But, but the period. one thing that we can agree on is that we, hopefully, every one of us in there are Christian, mm -hmm. and that we are ready. And we are written in the right. book, and then we are written in the Lamb's book of life. So it really doesn't matter again when this takes place. Yeah. But and that's all I'm saying is when we go through it. 
just read and understand, but the main thing is you're a child of God. Right. And you're sealed. He'll come when He comes. Now, and, and we're going to get into some wrath here in just a minute, but I, we just wanted to, to, to recap on this right here. That's how this theory got started. Yeah. Uh, and I think like Billy said just a minute ago, you know, it, as Christians, sometimes we look for the easy way out to... As human, you know, as humans, yeah, it's just not as Christian as humans, just to take the easy path. And as you know, as much as you read and study your Bible, you can you can always you can always see that that Christ kind of went against the grain, and everything, you know. Uh, so it's not going to be easy, you know. It's, it's not going to be easy. You know, I thought about that last question, and I look at all the disciples, how they was crucified, and how they was. Healed and everything, all the torment they went into, even Jesus Christ went through torment. Why do we Christians this day and time think we should get the easy way out? I, I think it touches on what Sam says. It's, it's just like a, what Sam a, said. a train of thought that, that we probably we shouldn't get the easy put way in out. our mind. But, but also, over these, and let's just take it from 1830 just as a basic point. <coughs> also, it, it's, it's what you're being taught and not researching the facts or Forming your own opinion too. You know, I was taught things for the last 40 years of my life that I'm finding that I have a different view than my granddaddy, than you know, than Aunt Carolyn, and whoever, my dad. And it's really opened my eyes to the Bible, to, to the Word, to, to everything. That you know, wait, wait a minute. You know, just because my granddad was taught this and taught this to me doesn't make it right. So I think you know, we all are should be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but it's also important to stay in your Bible and to, and to prove it for yourself and and discuss it with people. Just like you said last week, get a study book. You know, that, that that's the best thing I've ever done. Dustin's mine, whether he wants to be or not. You know, and, and we talk daily about stuff and, you know, this may surprise you, but we don't agree on everything. Yeah. And, and, but that's okay. That's okay because... If I propose something to him, you're in the Bible looking, trying to either prove me right or wrong, and vice versa. And we're just we're cover to cover. You know, I wasn't like that two years ago. You know, so it's it's really helped me. It's really helped. It's really opened my eyes. And I hope everybody here gets the same out of it that I do. But you're you're doing what a Christian is supposed to do. You got your nose in the Bible, dividing His Word. And that's one thing. You can know that you know that you're a Christian tonight if you if you're not. And as far as and I wanna talk about persecution. Yes, those guys are they went through a lot of physical uh, persecution. And there's Christians in the world today that are going through it. But if you're walking the right walk as Dustin alluded to just a minute ago, there's things going on today in our country and in our community that should be just flat breaking your heart. And if that's not persecution, I don't know what it is. I can take physical pain and so forth, but when I hear of nine kids, uh, or eight kids and a mother perishing in a house fire, it, fellas and ladies, if that don't break your heart and just shake you to the core, I mean, just things like, and then some of the violence and, and kids going astray and so forth, and the things people are doing. If that doesn't break your heart, and it doesn't shake you to the core, and they're pushing it and wearing it as a badge of honor, some of this debauchery that's going on, if that doesn't just tear you up, that to me, that's a form of persecution. Look here, I'm going to say something about your kids. They'll get burned in our community, like here, a long time ago. We had the same thing happen to us. Mm -hmm. And why he did it. And like 12 of them, mother, father, and all, brought up down there on Daily Road. Yeah, I a lot of people don't even remember that. But it did happen here in our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so is everybody good on the, where, where this where this theory came from? Okay. Okay, and then we, we touched on the, uh, the the men tribulation theory, and you know, the more tonight, the more we go into this after this first little discussion we had, the rest of it really doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. But you know, we're here, and it, it, Chris and I have compiled this, and we'll go ahead and go through it. But 
We just, it, it does not matter. If you're a Christian, it just simply does not matter. But I do think, and I honestly do believe this right here, that, that, that your Bible and the things written in the Bible is, is there is a reason that Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to use these and I know I'll continue to go to these same few scriptures, but there is a reason that Matthew chapter 24 and Luke 21 and Mark 13, there is a reason that this was written. And Mike, you asked me this morning, you said, why do I say my Bible? And I know my Bible reads the same as yours. And when I say my Bible, I'm hoping that when I say my Bible, I'm hoping that somebody says, well, does my Bible say that? And they, and they go to look. Because when they open this book and go to look, they're going to stumble across something if they have a willing heart. All right. And the reason I say Matthew 24, the reason I say this is important because it is broke down. And in my Bible, in, in chapter 24, verse 15, it's, it's in parentheses. It said, Whoso readeth, let him understand. There's a lot of people that call themselves Christian. I do believe this. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong. You think, think I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I think that there's a lot of people that call themselves Christian that will just... Sunday morning Christian is what I call them. Mm -hmm. They just come to church on Sunday morning mm -hmm. and sit on the pew and say amen every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then they don't never put, pick this book up to read and study and find out on their own. And aside from Christ shed blood, aside from that, this is your life source. This is your this is your guide through this life. And if, and, if, and if you're a professing Christian, I think I said that right. Professing, profession. I don't know. Professing. Profession. 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 Okay, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, if if you're that's kind of Christian, if you say you're a Christian, I'm going to put it like that because you know sometimes I can't speak. But anyway, if you say that you're a Christian and you're not in God's Word daily, something ain't right. Something is not right. Where's it talking about being Luke 4? Revelation. 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 Where's it now? Revelation 3. 3. There you go. Chapter 3. And, and, you know, and we're going to go over this. We're, we've actually we've got plans to go over this Luke 4. Um, but, can, can you read that, Bill? Can, can you just read that verse for me? I just want to make a point out there. I've got to give it time. Give it Which word did you read? Revelation 3. 19, is it 319? Take your memory and just write it up. It's Revelation 3.15. 3, 15, okay. Three, it, I, I got it right here. Uh, it says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold. He's saying that he would rather be you would he would rather you be one way or the other. You he'd rather you be cold. And it, it just doesn't care. But what, what's he gonna do? He's it, 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 keeper, What's he gonna do? It, it, exactly. Well, it, that's pretty graphic. I mean, I mean, the vomit. I, I mean, that's pretty graphic. So, well, what is that really saying? What, do you really know what they're really saying? I, 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 know, what I, I know what I think it is. I know what it's saying to me. Uh, uh, that it's just like it would just like to be me. Just throw it away. Just you know what I mean. Just throw it away. Well, if you look one, otherwise you don't know the word of God. Otherwise, he don't know you. No, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying. Neither hot nor cold means that you're in between. means that you read and believe or understand what you want to because you don't have the heart of God in your heart. When you're hot in anything, it means you have a burning desire. The reason that the world is the way it is today, as far as the Christian community is concerned, and this comes from my heart and my talks with God, is because too many of us, have lost the passion, the desire to do God's will, to do Christ's will. We say we're Christians, but little of us follow the word. I know a lot of Christians that have a lot more knowledge than I do. They, they went to college for it and all that. And as far as I'm concerned, you can fill a bottle full of pee and get more out of that than you can a learned wisdom preacher. 
that professes to love God and teach God's word and lead you astray because all they do is dictate to you. But we're here where it says, when, and this is God's word because it's written in what read. When he said to you, I neither hot nor cold, and a lukewarm, and I will vomit you out. What do you do when you get sick and you bother? You get rid of it. It's waste of something you don't want. It's what God's saying here. If you're neither hot nor cold, lukewarm, and you do not, I'm going to follow my word. I'm going to vomit you out and get rid of you because I have got time for you. And that comes back to what Dustin said, a Sunday morning Christian. A Sunday morning Christian. Exactly. It's like a, you know, quarter, a couch quarter, whatever you want to call it. But Still, I, I talk, you know, it's strange because I, I talked to Dustin this morning and I had some things that I wanted to say in reference to this, but Sam and Bill, believe it or not, in your discussion just now, make it very clear. And actually, Dustin and Chris, when you said, really, it doesn't matter to go any further than this, and you're wasting your time when you do, and I'll tell you flat out, okay? Because when you've lost anything that it has value, the value is what Bill said and what Sam said. Two of them together. But what I'm saying is this. When you lose a desire, when you become a born-again Christian, and this goes for all of us because I can't believe that anybody became a born-again Christian, and God says you change when you do. The awesome feeling that you get in your heart is when that's that Amen. awesome feeling you've got at that moment is when Christ entered your heart because you invited him in, because you're telling him that you believe in him, you're trusting him, and you know that he died for you. That's an awesome feeling that you should live with the rest of your life. And that alone, that alone, should give you the desire to pick up, and this is why I said to you this morning when you said this is my Bible, his word. When you first have Christ come into your life, if you don't have an awesome feeling that gives you the desire to want to know more, because just having him come into your heart, just understanding that you believe in him, he's the son of God, and he died for you, is not enough for me. It's enough to get me saved, yes, but I want to know more. And I don't see anybody that's really a Christian that doesn't want to. One of the gripes I got with churches nowadays, even when you go to Sunday school, or you go to church service, and the preacher has somebody come up and they want to be saved. After that child or that adult is saved and they leave their church on that Sunday, nobody else touches that person, goes near that person like they got left. <coughs> That's a sin in itself. Because God doesn't ordain a minister just to say, uh, just to bring somebody to the pulpit and teach them about Christ and have them get saved. It's also a command from God that you stay. You have to help them grow in God's Word. Why does He talk about all the time in His Word? About the bread. What is He talking about in His Word? He's, he didn't write and give us all this for nothing. If you can't live, if you can't understand it, and you have no desire to do, then you, you belong in hell. But if all of us really, if all of us really have Christ in our heart, if we're truly a born again, saved Christian and understand Christ for what He died on the cross for, we should never lose that passion. But the Christian community has lost that passion. That's why the UCLU or whatever they call it has prayer going on at school. Why they, they don't even want them to say prayer before any meetings in, 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 in courts and what have you. That's why I think this morning we talked to John, I think it, uh, I think it was uh, a person brought up about uh, his Christian church East Ham, Walter. It was it used to be Christian, now it's no longer. They, they don't even know what religion's in there. They were talking about something, I don't know how it brought up by the uh, Olympics, but it was. What, what does that tell you? A Christian church that no longer exists. If that's not a slap, if that's not saying to Christ, he wasted his time on the cross for us, what else will? And if we don't get off our rear ends, cut the TV off, and get out in the world and spread the light. One of the things that Ron said in, in, in his service this morning is about bringing the light. There's too many people living in the darkness. It's not God's responsibility now. It's our responsibility to bring the light to those people who live in the dark. That's the only command that God gave us when we became saved and became one of His children. Go out into the world and bring the light to those that do not know my son, so that they will know my son, so that none will be lost. He has given us no other command, and we can't even do that because we're too busy watching TV, playing around, cheating, and playing like we're Christians. When the hell, and I'm sorry I used the word hell, but I mean it with all my heart, are we going to really wake up, get that passion back in our life, and really 
understand what Christ is all about, and when we say that Jesus is in our we damn well mean it. And do something about it. Uh, and the only thing we can do about it is get out there and let the people that know, they don't know. And they can only do And the other thing is not our words that we bring to them. It's our actions, too. You ever heard the saying, actions speak louder than words? You can't go out there and profess Christ and act like an idiot. And believe me, I know one thing I do know, that when I'm a loss of words, when I talk about like I say, they're ready to throw me out of the mall. <laughs> but when I talk about Christ, and sometimes I lose my train of thought or whatever, and I lose words, the words come out all right. You know why? Because that's Christ helping me speak his words. Mm -hmm. And God will never, ever leave you down. We can only leave him down. He doesn't turn his back on us. We only turn our back on We're playing these stupid games, saying we're Christians, acting like we're Christians, but not doing what Christians are supposed to do. And all we're supposed to do is have the passion that Christ had when he died on the cross for us. If you have that passion in your heart, you can't go wrong. You will do what Christ wants you to do, and that's bring people to life so everyone, or at least most, will not be lost. And I think, to, to, and I know you got something to say, but no, I don't I'm know sorry, what I'm trying to thought, but what you just said is when is people going to wake up? I think, and, and I, may, I could be wrong, I think that when people are going to wake up is during this tribulation hour, when it's too late. <laughs> you know, but, that's just what I'm saying. That's and, and, and true, but she, and, and, and Bill said it, but I don't even think you real my way. And when you say it's, it's, it's a tribulation, if we're really in Christ, the tribulation doesn't mean the Bible. No. Yeah, we know we're saved. But what God is doing, and, and that's why I, when I spoke to you earlier, I said what you should have done before you came to this part, everyone should have read Revelations through and studied through first. It would have brought more understanding. Right. I think where a lot of the confusion and questions come from is because when Bill, and I don't know, I can't remember your name, it's probably because I just don't. The last two weeks, when you guys got in your conversations, oh. all right, you were so on, but the problem was you were shouting at each other. Well, you were not giving anybody else time to listen to what you were saying, and it got lost in the lesson. It doesn't do us any good, and I'm talking, I'm, I'm young, right? It doesn't do any good to have people talking at the same time when you're trying to talk about God because nobody's going to hear you because there's two people intersecting, like Chris just said a little long ago. If there's too many people talking at the same time, how the hell can you understand what's being said? Can I say something, man? Yeah. What you talk about is real true, what you say, every word you said. But you go to the first chapter of Revelation, start reading about the seven churches, it tells you plainly that's what we're going through now. The churches, you buy the people are dead, because the preachers not preaching what they're supposed to be preaching. Their preachers are dead. And, and that's why God That's right. It's water That's dead. right. I'm telling you, it's water dead. Yeah, he didn't right. want to hurt nobody's feelings, he didn't want to do this. That's right. And that's why you got dead churches. Right. But that's right. I, and that's why, and that's another thing. I am surprised because in, in the last several years, I've been to 37 churches so far. Okay. And the funny thing, the strangest thing is, the community church right here, the community church right here, has more as a stronger youth uh, congregation than any church I've been to. Most of them, the churches out there in Clarksville, number one, you've got one church out there, the parish, the preacher gets up there, he tells you, and I'm, I'm dead serious. He, I had to walk out. He tells you how much, you, and I'm talking about dollars. He tells you how many dollars you want to give to that church that day. Who you can talk to, who you can't talk to, and how you can live. That's a dictatorship. It said a damn thing through the whole service about the gospel. Nothing. All right? I know where he's going. It ain't the But the thing is, when you say, yeah, when you, when you, read, you begin to read Revelations and you read about the read about the seven years, but don't stop it. See, that's what a lot of people do. They pick up the Bible and they start reading because they don't have a study partner or they don't have a church that's really oriented to do what it's supposed well, so that's, to do. That's why people are not interested in church anymore. That's why you got all the people not going to church. And that's why it's up. You see this collection of people here? Right. So there's enough here that we should set dark roll on fire with Christ. But we don't. You know why? Because too often we're worried about them. Okay. Please work so. here. Every day before. of my life, I preach at work. Mm -hmm. I go to work, anytime I run into anybody, I tell them about God. You had John David, anybody mm -hmm. in here. I tell them about God. No, no, I, I did the same thing when I worked in the training. Like I said, the whole thing about it is, you live in the town right now. Right. Yeah. But people don't want to believe in God. <laughs> you know why they don't want to believe in God? Because they're not, because the, the actions they see from Christians, 
aren't the actions they should be seeing from Christians. I, I agree with you. Well, man. I agree with you to a point, I, yeah. and I agree with you to a point. Well, then about you got people starving death for the word of God. Too. Well, I, I agree with you to a point about preachers not preaching. I, I, you can't blame not knowing something solely on the preacher because what if you don't know something? That's that's not that preacher's fault. <coughs> if you don't know something, that's your fault. That's your responsibility. Just like it's Ben's and Mike's and mine and Wilson's and Teresa's. That's, that's our responsibility. Oh, true, true. Now, <laughs> but that's his job. That is his job to preach the word. He and, 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 and like both of you guys just said, you know, there's a I mean, there's a lot of churches that's got watered down messages that don't amount to a hill of beans. And David and I was speaking earlier, you know, before class started. You come out, you come out of a worship service and you feel like. Well, that's just another worship service. You ain't done nothing. You might as well just stay home. But David brought up a good point. It is the attitude you go in there with. If you go in there with an attitude that, hey, I want to receive a blessing out of this, and I want to, I want my blessing. It's all about attitude how you go into something. And church, church is a, there's no different. Church is no different. Let me tell you guys something. I'm just going to go and tell you. I and don't laugh at me. But I changed my prayer habits this week. You know, I, I just thought all my life it's okay just to just to lay down in bed there and pray. I actually bend my knee and which way is east? He's got a yeah. I, I faced east. And and I'm gonna tell you something, I've had a better week for it. Now, when I was down on my knees, promise to you. I like to not get up. <laughs> I like to not get up. But I did get up. And I did. The hall, and, and it's helped me. It's helped me as a person to do that. And what do I tell you this morning? To me, prayer, I walk just like I'm talking now. I walk out into the woods or I walk out into the backyard and I'll talk to God openly. My neighbors think I'm nuts. I don't care. That's my relationship with God. I honestly believe in my heart. He, hear, he, hear, he hears me when I talk to him. Amen. Um, he does. Yeah. I got arthritis in the knees. It's not an excuse, but it hurts too much to get up and down. That's why. So when you say you get down, you can't get up. Man, my back walked up. I have not, there's no place in the Bible. There's no place in God's word. He says He will not listen to you because you're not on that knee. And I, and I, what I'm saying, that was a personal choice yeah, no, that I made, I, 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 and and I think that's just showing showing God. I humbly come before you, and if I'm locked up down on the floor, I'm just going to be locked up. What, what is one of the just other things to get prostate. Other things that God asks you. To pray unceasingly. And why? That's the connection we have with Christ when He intercedes for us. If we don't, yeah, He knows everything, but what does He say? He wants us to open our mouths and, yeah, we do a lot of things we should ask forgiveness for. But like He said, He's not going to forgive us if we don't ask for it because when we ask, you know, we're admitting to the sin we've committed and He's not going to forgive you for a sin if you're not going to commit it, even though He already knows what it is. That's right. And that's what He's saying. I'd like to follow up on what Billy was saying. And Billy's absolutely right when he says people out here just don't care. And they don't want to hear the Word of God. And they don't. And Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gave us a glimpse of what it's going to be like. Amen. And when He told us to uh, stand fast and watch for Him, He brought up Noah. And He, 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 he brought it up then. The people back then, Noah, tried, Noah didn't just go about his business of building the ark. He tried to tell people, but they were busy, as Jesus said, about uh, all the things that are, that were going on in that time. It was probably the same things going on now. They made fun of him, basically, and they scoffed at him and went on. And we see what happened. All, right, all hell broke loose on them. Every one of them died, and we know where they're at today. The same thing's going to happen at the end of our time. All these people that don't want to hear uh, my testimony or about Jesus, same thing's going to happen. We can't stop not trying to give it to them. You know, you can't force nobody if they, you know, turn their back on you, do as Jesus said. Shake the dust from your sandals and keep walking. There's another man waiting or another woman waiting for it. But uh, there are people out there that aren't going to accept it and don't want to hear it. Right, but I thank you for your sake when you say it. That shouldn't stop us from still giving yeah. our testimony. And, and they're going to be mili they're going to be a militant about it too at times. They're going to get pretty pretty hostile with you. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, <laughs> and get into this mid this mid tribulation. Like I said, it it, it it really doesn't matter. 
but we did put it together and we might as well go ahead and do it. Go, we might as well go ahead and do it. Uh, and, and Ben, you may be able to. Yeah, I just, uh, I believe the, uh, obviously the seven years, is, I don't believe that the, uh, the seven years is going to start with the actual rapture. I believe it will start with the, um, with the, the peace treaty and uh, the false problem. Yeah, I believe uh, the what how to say the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls of wrath happen in a row, not all at once. And I believe the actually this says the three and a half years. I actually believe we're getting ra like raptured, raptured on like the sixth seal, uh, not the seventh trumpet. But uh, like I say. I don't know. That's just what I come up with. This is the one that, it, when I was researching this, I could hardly find anything. I mean, I scrounged to get what little bit I got. And I, I don't really understand, to be honest with you. So I, I want to learn a little bit about it anyway, just, just to know. I did too. Uh, but, I mean, really, Ben's going to take the lead on this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I just, oh, there wasn't awesome. nothing out there, you know, on, on this very much. Y'all know what it means when you talk about the Antichrist will commit abomination and isolation. Oh, yes, great. What does that mean? Except when he stands on the yeah. temple. What, 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 when he sits in the seat of God's temple. Right. And what who else does that? Who's that? When he sits down in there, he got five months. What I did learn researching this, though, is what the common denominator here with, with everybody's theory I kind of put together was it was an escape from wrath. And Sam, I know you got on me last week about the pre-K wrath or the, uh, what was it, the uh, the pre-wrath theory. You got on me a couple of times about that. But that that's really the way it was labeled from my research. So I just don't know a lot about it. But I mean, I, I did put some stuff together, what I did find. And, and it's all dealing with wrath. So there it is. It's in Romans, 1 Thessalonians. I don't know what else to say, to be honest with yeah. you. I've kind of lost it. Yeah, I, I mean, I am too. I've never really, I've never really give this much thought. Uh, well, I think you should probably at least point out the scriptures: uh, Daniel seven twenty five, Romans five nine, and First Thessalonians one ten. Since you are, yeah, I and mean, these are dealing with wrath, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I, it, you know, basically, the, these verses are just saying, are just supporting this theory on the mid tribulation. And you know, I, I personally, I, I think of two wraths. You know, the Antichrist wrath and then God's wrath on the Antichrist. I, I don't know how other people think. How do you think that's not? No, that's, you, that's the way I, that I've always thought. That is that that there are two wraths is. Uh, is it the Antichrist wrath on the people, and then God's wrath on the on the Antichrist and the people that worship the Antichrist? That's that's how I've always uh, that's how I've, I've always seen that. That's how I've always believed. Not to say that that's right, but that's how I've always believed that because you know, as we learn in Daniel, you know. Uh, the Antichrist is coming, and he's going to mimic everything Christ is going to do. Uh, and again, he, he's going to deceive. He's going to put Mark thirteen, Matthew twenty four, Luke twenty one, ten. He tells you, proclaim it. He's coming. That's he's coming like Christ. He's not coming to anything good head up. And that's, like that. and, and that's that's why you know, Chris and I have talked about this a lot. You know, you, you arm somebody, arm them with knowledge, and you you. They're a better person for it. You know, they may not see it right now. They may not see it in 10 years. Uh, but hopefully, when this time, whenever this time happens, maybe that somebody can look back on this, you know, and say, hey, wait a minute, we've learned this. Well, here's my question. Where I'm confused at. I don't understand the years and all that. The years? At all. I don't understand any of this at all. Um, from experience, from very own personal experience, my own salvation experience. My question is, is it possible that my, I'm speaking for me, I can't speak for others, salvation experience was the second 
what everybody wants to call the second coming of Christ. I'm hearing that there's Jesus come. I'm, I'm, I, there's all this other... I've stayed away from Revelations because I've kind of been... You know what Revelation means? But here's... Well, let her finish, Bill. Let, let her finish. The reason why I'm asking is because, you know, first I found salvation. To me, that's the Holy Spirit in me. And when the... At the Jordan River, when Jesus went under the water, got up, and then the dove came from above, and the Word came with it. To me, the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right, the Holy Spirit. That's what I see. So when I receive the Holy Spirit, what is that to everybody else? I keep, you know, I hear that we're sealed, and I know that I'm His, and I know that I know where I'm going, and I know that the Lord is guiding me every day of this earth. But I don't understand, you know, when we're getting into this tribulation, all this other stuff, to me, Jesus is coming a twinkling of an eye already and has given me his spirit that I live with and I have everlasting life. That's how I see it, and I don't know. Wait a minute. See, but it's a trick in this whole bit. It's a mystery in the Bible. The Bible and it, and that's Christ. Christ is the well, mystery. The, well, the mystery is in the Bible that Satan's going to come for Christ. But it says Christ is the mystery. But Christ is the mystery. Yes. But Satan is going to come as Christ, and the whole world will believe that he is Christ. Which is why we don't have the Christians. We have a lot of people that believe they are, and but they're not. People. It's going to be people sit on the church pew for 30, 40 years saying amen every Sunday. Right. And they don't think they haven't been called, they haven't been drawn. Because they never was taught Revelation. And Revelation means revealing. Okay. So, Gavin, what are you confused about? The Holy Spirit? What what it is? No. Um, you know how... Well, well, I already received it. To me, I already received eternal life. You can do whatever you want to me now. I know because the Holy Spirit has already come to me. We're just Jesus in the Spirit. It's already come to me. As that's how I see it. Has already sealed. I'm sealed. I'm His. So no matter what happens today, I'm ready. Right. Which is what I call, you know. Well, so what you're saying is you ain't worried about it. Just when He comes, you'll be ready to go. I'm already. Right. Like today, right, right here, that's right that's now. Right. That's right. That's but this is where I believe. This is where I believe that. I mean, I'm still reading the Bible. Don't get me wrong, and I, and I'm going to try to touch that Revelations pretty hard and heavy. But to me, I just Jesus has already come to me. Well, what? I, I, I think. I think. To me, I mean, for me, I already know. But what, what I'm saying is that you said something about the second coming of Christ, and, and he it. Are you kind of confused on what does that mean, the second coming of Christ? Because that, that's, uh, yeah, that's I how I know. took that. Right. Okay, well, you guys tell me if I'm wrong. To me, the second coming of Christ is, well, he's already come once as a baby. He's already, already right. come to this earth one time as a baby. Right. Well, he's not a baby anymore. And he is, the Bible specifically says, right. he's coming back. You know, right. He is coming back to gather his, his people. Right. Sure. That is the second coming of Christ. And that's what that's what we're discussing. You know, is it before the tribulation, mid times, yes, or after? after. Yeah. But you are a hundred percent right. Christ is already, you know, right. He already lives inside of you. So you're with the rest of us. This don't amount to a hill of beans, really. It doesn't matter. Well, that's one thing. Yeah. Is she worshiping that much? Well, because they can do that. People are going to church every Sunday morning, sitting on pew, and never been taught the book of Revelation. Maybe they've never been saved too. Just like her, she just like the three Hebrew children. They throw them in the fire. No, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Burn her. But the whole thing Jesus is going to take care of her. Like he is everybody else. Yeah. But That's still, right. you can bow down and worship that Antichrist because you know what's taught. If, if you, you believe in Antichrist, I don't believe you ever bow down. But well, that goes back to arming people with knowledge. And, you know, That's why it needs to be taught in it. In the well, if you arm people with knowledge, it also keeps this watered down message out of the churches. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Well, so I'm like, you, you're a lot stronger. You have a lot stronger right. message. Is watered down message. They need to be kept out of church. Huh? Well, I, there, there still seems to be, a, a, and I keep hearing it, and people are, even in this class, you're still going to as an ordained minister, we are, all we are to do in the church service 
is to bring the understanding of Christ, why he died on the cross, and how to to lead people to Christ. Because how much time do you have in a service? You only have an hour in this one, some of them have to. Uh, that's what we're commanded to do as far as the church service goes. Right? It's what we do the most is what happens after church. A true pastor, when I say a true pastor, and I'm talking about a pastor with a passion of Christ in his heart, he doesn't spare a moment of his time bringing God's word or doing what he can to people that need help in any way. And the biggest help people need is coming to Christ. Any pastor or his soul fails to take the time make the time to reach people that are, as some of us may say, and even like Sam says, that don't want to listen, they call themselves unreachable. I'm a persistent person. You'll never tell me you're unreachable because I'll die trying to reach you. If you don't want to be reached, when the tribulation comes, you'll wish you had. Amen. See, that's the people that need to worry about the tribulation. People like, uh, there's one church on the other side, of uh, course, Paid four million dollars for a church, and every week they seem to remind the congregation they paid for. What purpose does that serve? As far as I'm concerned, that preacher's wasting his time, and God's just waiting for him to pass away so he can spear it right into heaven. <laughs> Mark, I want to comment on that. You, you, you said that that's the preacher's um, <coughs> obligation. Yeah, but what well, else no, has an obligation? Well, I mean, but he's saying that as an ordained minister, right. which, he, which he is, right? Yeah. yeah. That, you know that that's what he's supposed to do. But listen, I, honestly, I'm, I'm just speaking for me. That's not enough for me. I, hey, no, it, I, no, no. See, that's not all. I'm saying it's a burden during a church service. You cannot you cannot bring everything into a person's life about mm -hmm. Christ in an hour. Yeah, but that's the what the whole church, church, the whole package is for, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the whole comment, package. Yeah. I mean, that's. You I know, know how many times I've called Dustin on Wednesday and like, where, where can I go to church? I, I, I just I, need to go somewhere. And that's what he's saying. That, that, that's what my yeah, saying. He's saying that guy, he'll reach I, out. Yeah, I, I mean, I could really go to, honestly, I go to church two or three nights a week. And I've called you and said, hey, you can go, go to church, church seven church. days a week. It don't mean a doggone thing if you're not going there for the right reason. Well, I'm going there for the right I know, reason. I, I guarantee that. you that. But the thing is, well, let, me, let me turn this around a minute. Okay? Even though I'm an ordained minister, it makes me no different than you. The reason I say that is, the knowledge that you have in your head right now, all right, and like I told Justin when I talked to him, this is the best study I've come across in a long while. The discussions that go on here, the direction that it takes, even though some of this, like I said, doesn't have the real, there's a purpose for it. But it leads to other things. Right. Mm -hmm. But the day you stop, the day you stop wondering, the day you stop asking questions, and the day you stop trying to help people about Christ, don't leave it up to somebody. If, if in your heart you have the passion of Christ, that's all you need. It's great when you have other people with you. Alright? But that's why a lot of things are going by the way, sir, because we're waiting for somebody else to do our job. And I'm trying to tell you, a pastor's job, a pastor's job is not just church service. But he can't teach you everything about God's word I agree. In an hour. No, he can't. But he should. Alright? That number one, what are the job why do you think a church has elders? Well, that, why do you think the church has, has elders? Do you know that there is one thing that made, why I left the church, I think it was about two months ago now, this church in particular, was because one of, one of the elders told me to my face, okay, that uh, when this person was acting out being disrespectful to Christ in, in Christ's house, because that the church is Christ. And I, I, I tried to talk to that person, and I got told by an elder, he needs too much of the church to leave him alone. I come out the door and I told that elder right to his face, you'll never catch me in the Presbyterian Church again. The only reason I come back is number one, I talked to Ron, I talked to Dustin, and I talked to a few other people. Right? And I was taken out of the church and I'm talking about Christ because I got mad at an elder. An elder isn't the church. What he did, he hurt my heart because he's not doing what an elder is supposed to do. An elder is supposed to keep the church and it's going in the right direction. An elder actually is like an octopus. To a pastor, he's the arms that the pastor don't have. The pastor can't go in all different directions. He can only go in one because he's one person. But if you've got enough people, we're all arms in the church. And I'm saying, when I say of the church, I'm talking of Christ. Not Ron Burgess. Not anybody else. We are arms of Christ. When we fail to act and do what he wants us to do, 
and, and, and as an elder of a church, is supposed to set an example. Okay? And I think that's why they keep telling me to this day that most elders and businessmen, whatever they are, they're, they're looked high upon in the community. If they're not doing Christ's work, I don't care what they are. They're not but doing here's, they should be there. Here's the thing. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but here's, no, right, here's the thing. If, if you left, that was God's will. Every single thing that happens to us, like you said before, he's got a tug for Wednesday. I've been having a tug for Wednesday night for a long time myself. There's two this churches, right there, there's a, but we can get it going right now. I mean, you know, there's, seriously. Yeah, Y'all don't have one. We can put something there. there. But I'm just saying, you have that. Dustin, this is awesome. I'm with Billy. I'm at church every day, seven days a week. I don't have church service here on Wednesday. You know? Y'all don't have church service no. up here on Wednesday. Look at no. it. I like to say something. Look at it. This is what I don't say to me. Look at it. Every day you live in your life. Mm -hmm. Every day you live in your life. You tell, you tell, you tell your father in your, in your life. You tell your son in your life. All right. Mm -hmm. Every day you get in your Bible and you study. I go to church every day. Every day. I'm in my Bible every day. I'm studying. And I'm still learning so much. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel. Full of I'm learning so much. Uh, I'm, Isaiah, full of you know, I'm learning so much that I will never know if I never did open the Bible up. Mm -hmm. I watch these preachers. I got certain preachers I watch. They teaching me a whole lot. And I'm telling you, every one of y'all in here, you're missing the world by not sitting down and studying your Bible and getting into a good broadcast with a good preacher and let him teach you. And let, we got him on your television. And they're all time. Derek, he's been watching. Dustin watching. Look here. They teaching you this Bible. And they go but chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and tell you what this Bible says and what it means. You know? And that's how I learn stuff. <coughs> and I record it where I can go back and take my Bible and go through it. I go to church every night. Every night. Well, to not to cut you off, Billy, but it's, uh, it's almost seven. And if it's okay with everybody, we'll run a little long. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and, and get through this, mm -hmm. and and, and, I, and I think with the whole class, I, I think collectively has pretty much already formed its opinion about this it's really don't this really don't. I mean, if if you're a Christian, you, I'd like to run through though. Okay, uh, yeah, and we will if everybody wants to stay. I mean, like I said, yeah, it, it right. may run run a little bit over. And that's okay. Don't mm -hmm. uh, worry about that. Okay, well, but I think that the the, the class. Like that we're gonna leave. I think that the class has pretty much already said, "Hey, this really doesn't amount to a hill of beans if 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 we're truly saved." Mm -hmm. You know, and what we were trying to do here with this these three theories is form your own opinion, not what somebody else says. Mm -hmm. Get in your word of God, see what it says, see how it unfolds out, and you know, you like I said, you arm somebody with knowledge, they're a better person for. It. May not happen tomorrow. Eventually, it's going to happen. And <clears throat> these four right here, we we may be dead when all this comes to death. They may have to go through this. I don't know. Uh, if we can arm these four right here, man, this is amazing. You four young people here in this black. That's what I. Amazing. That's what I can find. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it being you're right. It, we, yeah, we'll go through. If it runs us over, it just runs us over. Uh, we don't want to get really bogged down on it because, like I said, I think that we pretty much made up our mind. It really don't matter. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But, but, but Dustin, and really, if you listen to everything that's been said and everybody just spoken, you know you brought us to the right direction. So you can run through this, you finish it, and that's your will. And I think that's God. But. You sound like you're, you don't have nothing to apologize for because as far as I'm concerned, like you said, you have brought us in the direction that we need to go in. The thing is now not to let up. Right. And, and and while we were sitting here discussing, you know, Chris had broke down right here next week, Luke warm. Well, hold on. Before you say something, I've had this done for about three weeks. And I don't even know why I did it. But now it's clear. You know, and, and, and he, he nudged me. And I, I told, I've even pulled it up and showed him. It's already done. We can do it right now. Kind of but, I, but I think that, that that we're going to have to discuss this lukewarm. Let's finish it right. And yeah, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. Next week, you you know what to prepare for. 
like Mike said, read Revelation, read, especially read chapter 3. Find out what it means. Find out what it means. That way, next week you know what we're fixing to get into. Uh, that may kind of thrill us, uh, threw us off. Uh, but it don't matter. Like you said, we've been led. So let's go ahead and get into this post-tribulation. Now, let me do say this. <laughs> I'm not pushing my belief on nobody, but I do believe this right here. Uh, this post-tribulation theory is the belief that there is only one coming of the Lord at the end of the tribulation at the seventh trumpet. Amen. It's, Amen. it's that's all I can say about it. Well, I can say a lot more about it, but I'm not going to. Uh, Just a brief history. The post-tribulation belief is the rapture will take place at the end of the tribulation. Just okay. They believe that the rapture and the return of the Lord are in one event. That the church will be called up quote unquote, to meet the Lord as He descends from heaven. All right. There's no history of the pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation rapture in any church research that I've found. Um, in the early 1800s. I'm kind of getting off here, just paraphrasing. Um, but I did find one of the best evidences that the church will be on earth through the tribulation is that the Bible clearly states that the Antichrist will, will persecute the church and saint, church slash saints after he comes. There's a lot of debate saying where the church isn't mentioned, but the saints are, and we all know that the saints make up the church. So take that for what you, for what you will. I don't know. I, 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 I agree with Dustin. I didn't agree with him a year ago, but one thing I want to point out here, right there, the saint. Who are the saints? The church is the saint. The saint is God's elect people. Yeah. Right. I'm sitting right here. It, 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 it. it. If one verse in the Bible cannot be fulfilled, the Bible would be no good. Luke chapter 12, verse 10, it's got to be fulfilled. What does that say? God's elect people will stand before Satan, the Antichrist, and they got to let the Holy Spirit speak through them. That's got to be fulfilled. If we're all gone, no one's here on this earth to do that. Because we're all gone. The saints are gone. All the, all the cross the Christian gone. It ain't nobody here to do that. So we're not going to work. Because we got to fill that scripture. I am. I'm going into the millennium. Well, I don't know about you, Billy. Well, but, c coming back to this, we, we use the same verses as pretty much we did in the in the pre trib yeah. um, They're pretty much the same, basically. It's, you know, we, we went over earlier. We just read. I think it was verse 17 is what the pre trib what, what scripture was that you gave, Billy? Luke chapter 12, verse 10. That's the only sin in the Bible cannot be forgiven. The blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. Blaspheme yeah. Which means the unbelieving of the Holy Means not accepted. The only sin cannot be forgiven. It has to be a late Christian to be there. I'll tell you something else. Over in the last part of Revelation, it talks about when the white, great white throne judgment starts at the pulpit. Uh, right. no, don't, don't think about this one. If, if, you got something to say, Bob? I got a question. Oh, this may open up a can of words. It does. Just close it down real quick. We'll do it next week. <laughs> what about the nation of Israel? Yeah, let's get into that next week. Because, you, you want to do that next yeah, week? Well, we'll go ahead. That's pretty deep. No, we'll do it next week. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. That's, just, that's just half of my question. Well, no, it ain't going to be no snow down. No, it won't be a snow day. If it's a snow day, we'll do it the week after. We'll do it. We don't have to. What was your question? I didn't hear all your questions. The nation of Israel. Because, I mean, if you get something, yeah, we better wait. Yeah, yeah, we better wait on that. All right, let's wait yeah, on that. We one. Wait on that we'll wait on that one. That, 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 it's going to be a hard one. That's going to be a hard one. Hey, guys, let's go. I mean, you know the nation is. Basically, us. Like I said, it's. You will the fifth? You will the fifth? Keep on like Chris said, you know, the same scriptures, 1 Corinthians, Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, they're the same scriptures that pre-tribulation uses as post. Basically, this is this is how I see it. I would like to believe that we're not going to have to go through this tribulation hour. It's easier to believe that way. But, like I've always said, if plan A don't work, what to look for. So I'm just going to go ahead and gear up for this tribulation deal and know what to look for. So it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, there's there's the, there's the. if you guys want to write this down, you can. Gabby, I know you take a lot of notes. 
Revelations 11, chapter, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. I want you to read that 15. Will you do that? Yeah. Okay. Revelations chapter 11.